you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 22 and verse 54. Pastor, thank you again. I always honor the pulpit of the pastor. Thank you, sir, for allowing me to come. In Jesus' name. Now, this may seem a little odd scripture to preach from or speak from this morning, but if you'll just go on the journey with me, I promise you God is going to do some amazing things. Oh. Luke chapter 22 and verse 54, the Bible says, Then took they him, speaking of Jesus, and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And I want to key on this last line. And Peter followed afar off. Peter followed afar off. If you will give me just a few moments, I want to speak to you about your position determines your deliverance. Your position determines your deliverance. Can you lift your hands all over this room? In the name of Jesus, right now, God, I know what you said that you want to do with this house. Someone is going to leave here, God, full of the Holy Ghost. Someone is going to leave here, God, with their vices and their addictions broken in their life. Someone is going to leave here with healing, a complete healing of their body, God. A resurrection of their spirit. In the name of Jesus, prepare our hearts and ears, God, our minds to receive your word. Let it transform the lives that are in this house today. In the name of Jesus, and can you give your hand a clap of praise unto the Lord. setting that we just read from in Luke chapter 22 is found at the Garden of Gethsemane at the, at the end of Jesus' ministry. I call it the beginning of the end because we know the end was just the beginning, so it's a little oxymoron when you read it that way, but this was the beginning of the end of the ministry of Jesus Christ on this earth when he was going to be betrayed and he was taken captive and he was led. And at first, if you read this in different versions of the gospel, at first, the disciples tried to have Jesus back. Yeah. Yeah. This, this man we just talked about, that Peter that followed afar off the Bible in another scripture setting, said he pulled his sword and cut off the ear. Yeah. And the Lord had to repair his damage. And that's like the Lord, he has to repair some stuff that we do sometimes. Yeah. Oh my. Oh my. We whipped that sword out and cut, and the yeah. Lord said, now i got to go on a healing mission. Yeah. Hold on a minute. It's not what I'm here for. I'm preparing to, to die, but i got to stop a moment and fix what you just messed up. I'm glad we have a fix-it God. I'm glad he always has his super glue. I'm glad he always has his ability and his power to fix what I mess up because the Lord knows I mess up all the time. But what we realize after we read and we combine these stories of the gospel of this and we begin to read it, what we understand is... That was a momentary uh, effort on Peter's part. And when he really realized that these men were going to take Jesus, and Jesus wasn't going to stop them, and he wasn't going to call the angels down, fear overtook Peter, and he begins to back away. And most of the disciples, as we read, that had followed Jesus deserted him, with the exception of John the Beloved, who stood by, stood by him. And for the next few verses and chapters, in the, new, in the Gospels that we read, you're not going to read a lot about the disciples. There's only two disciples you're going to read about in the next few scriptures. And one stuck by him and one followed him afar off. So we get this glimpse of Peter and his new position when it comes to God. And it's this afar off. Now, I don't think that that was not because Peter didn't care. Peter's heart was breaking. Peter didn't know what to do. But the Bible says that he was scared to be counted as Christ. And so because of that, he followed afar off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want you to think and get a bad impression of Peter here. No. He did love the Lord. Right. He's just too afraid. Let me just tell you something in this room. You will never be successful if you follow Christ afar off. You will never have a ministry if you follow Christ afar off. You will never have deliverance and power released when you follow Christ afar off. Well, I want to be called a Christian, but I don't want anybody else to know I'm a Christian. 
I want to come to church on Sunday, but boy, when I go to work on Monday, I don't want them to call me out for what I believe. I don't want them to ask me why I live the way I do. Let me tell you something. You might can go to heaven. You know the scary, one of the scary scriptures in the Bible, I think? If the righteous scarcely be saved. Now, now you just think about that for a minute because I get word pictures when I when I read the Bible. That's how I do it. I look at that as limbo. Anybody ever played limbo? I used to could get that bar down low. I, I can't do that no more. But anybody ever played limbo when you just barely made it? And there's a lot of Christians living today that they're going to get into heaven, but it's going to be like playing limbo because they're going to be the righteous scarcely saved. But that's because they made a choice a long time ago. I, I want to be known as your disciple, but I don't want to be too known as your disciple. I want to follow you, but I don't want to follow you too closely. I want to obey the word, but only the parts that I like. I want to praise when I feel good. I want to shout when I feel good. And that's not how you do this thing. You're either all in or you're not all in. He said, I want all of you. Love me with all of your might, all of your strength. Tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. All right. Come on. 
verse 6. But when he saw Jesus, I right. yeah. Now, if, if, if there was a period there, that would be a very sad story about this man. If there was a period there. But there's a comma. And the Bible says when he saw Jesus afar off, what did he He changed his position. <laughs> he said, I'm not staying out here. And the Bible says he, he ran and he worshipped him. He changed his position. He didn't stay standing afar off. Yeah. 
angels destroy you, they'll rot you from the inside out. And they said, oh, it's that old blind guy over there. 
like when you're sick. Uh, all right. <laughs> you like coming to church and feeling God. Yeah, yeah. Come on. You like Come on. seeing others get blessed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. Speak I don't need anything. Speak to it. Come on. Come on. Oh, and because you don't change your position, there's no deliverance. Right. Yeah. When we left Peter in Luke chapter 22 and 54, he was standing afar off. And I wish I could tell you that's as, as far as he went, but it's not. That's right. When they called him out on it, when they asked him if he was a Christian, he couldn't confess it. I couldn't change his position. <laughs> the Bible says in Luke 22, 62, that he goes further, and Peter went out. He wept bitterly. He went out. You see, standing afar off, if you never confess him, there's going to be a moment when you're too close to the exit and you're going to walk out the door. Oh, come on now. Come on. Oh, be good. When you sit too close to the exit, come on now. it's too easy to step out. But I'm here to declare to you that was not the end of Peter's story. Now, when Luke chapter 22 and verse 62 closes, that's the last time we see Peter until here. Right. Let me tell you what he was doing. Luke chapter 24. Yes. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to play. They were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. They were afraid, and they bowed down their faces to the earth. And they said, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He's not here, but risen. That was Mary. But then you got to jump down to verse 8. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all the things unto the eleven and to the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other that with women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to be them as idle tales and they believed them not. Hold on. Hold on. Come on. Peter, where are you? Last time I saw you, you were fleeing the presence of God. What are you? Look at verse 12. <laughs> then arose Peter and ran towards where Jesus was. He said, I'm going to get my position back. I got to change my position. When I left, I wasn't happy. I went the wrong direction. I'm going to change my position. And let me tell you what happened. He stood up on the day of Pentecost and preached a message and opened the gospel to the Jews. He stood up in Cornelius' house and preached a message and opened the message unto the Gentiles. God developed a ministry and exploded his life. Verse 62 was the last glimpse we had of Peter. He, he would not have been delivered. There would have been nothing in his life. Oh, my challenge to you today is where are you standing? What is your position today? Some of you in this room, you're only one step away from your deliverance. Some of you are only one praise away from the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Some of you are only one shout away from healing in your body. Some of you are only one hand raised away from apostolic deliverance in your life. I'm asking you, where are you standing? What's your position today? What are you willing to do to get deliverance, to get hope, and to get healing in your life? Is there something you can do that you've never done before? Maybe you never made your way to the altar. Make your way to the altar right now. Maybe someone just never raised your hands. Raise your hands. If you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, don't stop today. Come here. Raise your hands as high as you can. Somebody need deliverance? That's it. That's it. Come on. Baptism of the 
the Holy Ghost when the evidence is speaking with other tongues. If you will just raise your hands right where you are or make your way to the altar. Almighty God is going to touch you right now.